This tutorial series will take you from a complete beginner to an advanced level user of Studio One. The aim of this first video is to get you making music as quick as possible. I'm going to skip past some things, but just know that there'll be more in-depth tips and tutorial videos to come later on in the series. At the end of each video, I'll add some bonus tips and keyboard shortcuts. These are going to help you become much more efficient when using Studio One, so make sure you stick around till the end. Please like the video if you find it useful, subscribe for more content, check out the links in the description, and finally, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Shall we begin? When you first open up Studio One, you'll see the start page. Any songs, projects, or shows that you have saved will appear here. Click here for the audio setup page and make sure that your audio interface is selected as the audio device if you have one. To create a new song, click here. Choose your song title, save location and song tempo. With stretch audio files to song tempo selected, any audio files that are imported will automatically be time stretched to fit the song tempo. This can degrade the sound quality of a sample and isn't always wanted, so I keep it unchecked. I keep play overlaps unchecked too. Click OK to open up your new song in the song page. I'll give you a quick basic overview first and we'll go into more detail later on. Since we're learning, we're going to start by turning on the info view by clicking this question mark. If it's highlighted blue, then it's already on. This will give us different information depending on what we hover over with the mouse cursor. On the right here, we have the browser. This contains our instruments, effects, and files. Open and close it by clicking Browse in the bottom right. This main section is the timeline, where we arrange our song. Let's drag some audio files in. These loops come free with Studio One. Now we have three tracks, also referred to as channels. We can change the volume, solo the track so we can hear it alone, or mute the track. Down at the bottom is our transport controls. Play, stop, return to the beginning, and record. We can also change our tempo here. Up here we have our different tools to perform different functions. And we have our grid size settings. Finally, in the bottom right, we can click Edit to open up the editor, we'll look at this later, or Mix to open up the mixer, where we can see our three tracks with volume meters and faders. This is the time ruler. By clicking and dragging up and down, we can zoom in and out horizontally. Click and drag left and right to scroll along the timeline. You can also zoom by scrolling the mouse wheel while hovered over the time ruler. By holding down control and scrolling with a mouse wheel, we can zoom in and out vertically. When you hover over the top of the time ruler, you'll see the cursor change to this pencil. Click and drag to draw a loop range. This button on the navigation bar enables the loop. You can alter the loop range by dragging the edges. The different tools allow you to perform different functions. The main ones you'll be using are the arrow tool and range tool. We'll cover the rest in a later video. With the arrow tool you can select events. Click and drag to move events. Click and drag from a blank space to draw an area. Any events within that area will be selected. Hold shift to do this when you're hovering over an event. Use the range tool to create ranges. Double click to split an event at the cursor. Draw a range then double click to split events at the edges of the range. The Smart Tool combines both the arrow and the range tool. Enable it by clicking this square bracket symbol. You'll see both tools highlighted blue when it's enabled. When hovering over the bottom half of a track lane, we get the arrow tool. Over the top half, we get the range tool. I recommend getting used to this as it can seriously speed up your workflow. Clicking this little arrow on the arrow tool lets you choose an alternative tool. When the arrow tool or Smart Tool is active, Holding control will enable the alternative tool. I like to keep this on the range tool because when zoomed out too much, the smart tool will only act as an arrow tool. Now we can draw ranges by holding control.
This enables grid snapping. With it turned off, we can place an event anywhere in the timeline. With it turned on, events will snap to the grid. When making music, this keeps your parts in time with a global tempo. The time-based setting changes the grid visuals and time ruler format. For making music, you'll want this on bars. You can change the spacing between grid lines with the settings here. Then there's the quantize value. To explain that, here's an example. If we set the time base to quarter notes and the quantize to eighth notes, see how the grid only shows quarter notes, but the event snaps to the eighth notes on and in between the grid lines. I keep my time base set to quantize. That means that when I change my quantize setting, the grid visuals change to match it. Finally, we have the snap setting. Again, you can set this to match the quantize setting. I like it on adaptive. That means the snap grid size will change depending on how zoomed in or out you are. See how when zoomed out, the event is only snapping to quarter notes, even though quantize is set to 16th notes. The two main track types are audio tracks and instrument tracks. Instrument tracks are often referred to as MIDI tracks. To create a new track, right click in an empty space on the tracks panel, or click this plus icon. A quicker way to do this is by dragging something in from the browser. Let's choose an instrument under the instruments tab in the browser. Click and drag it onto the timeline to insert the instrument on a new instrument track. Click the cross to close the instrument editor, and click this mini keyboard symbol to open it again. You can also click this to close it too. The instrument editor is where you change the sound that will be played. To tell the instrument what notes to play, you need to create a MIDI clip, or as Studio One calls it, an instrument part. Do this by double clicking with the arrow tool. You can click and drag the edges to resize. Or do this by drawing a range and double clicking. Double click with the arrow tool to open up the editor for that clip or part. Or click edit in the bottom right with your chosen clip selected. Here is the piano roll. If we do the same but with a drum sampler, then we'll get the drum view. We can switch between the two options here. Notice how we have a separate time ruler, tools, and grid size settings to the main timeline. We can resize this window by clicking and dragging here, and we can zoom in and out in the same way as the timeline. On the left we can see the notes of a keyboard. Click on them to play a note. Now we can arrange some notes to play. With the arrow tool, double click to create a note. We'll cover the piano roll much more in depth in a later video. It's worth noting that a MIDI clip will not produce a sound, unless the track that it's on has an instrument assigned to it. To use a sample, or to make a new recording, you'll need an audio track. One will automatically be created when dragging an audio file into the song. Now we can edit the audio clip in various ways. Drag this up and down to change the gain or volume of the clip. Notice how the waveform changes. Create a fade in, or fade out, like this by dragging these symbols on the top left and top right of the clip. Right click for more options, for example, reversing the audio. To remove a track, right click and remove track. On instrument tracks, make sure to choose remove track and instrument. If you just remove the track like this, then the instrument will no longer make any sound, but it will still be in the project. This adds clutter and potentially uses up valuable processing power from your computer's CPU. If recording, we'll need to add an empty audio track. You can create one by right clicking in an empty space in the tracks area. Even if recording from a single sound source like a microphone, I'll normally use a stereo track. This is because I may want to add a stereo effect later on. To record, we need to choose our input here. You'll have different options depending on your setup. Click this to arm the track for recording. With the monitor button enabled, you can listen to the input. To add a metronome to help keep your artist in time, click this symbol down in the navigation bar. 
Now click the record button to start recording. <laughs> to add an effect plugin, simply drag an effect from the browser onto a track. This will open up the effect in the channel editor window. We can alter the effect parameters and when we're happy with it, we can close the channel editor by clicking the cross. If we want to add another effect, we can do the same again. Now in the channel editor, we can see both of the effects on this track. The effects are applied in order from left to right. To remove an effect, click on the drop down and choose remove. To temporarily disable an effect, click on the power button symbol. You can also reorder them by clicking and dragging. The mixer is opened by clicking mix in the bottom right. Here you'll see your individual tracks and a master channel at the right. All individual tracks are routed to the master channel by default. We can see the tracks output here and just above it is the track input. With MIDI tracks or instrument tracks, the instrument inserted on the channel will show as the input source. Below that we have a pan control, which controls the balance between left and right. There's a solo, mute, arm for recording and monitor button just like over here, a volume fader and meter in decibels. We can also see our insert and send effects. With an insert effect you are placing a plugin directly on the track in series. This means that the whole signal is affected. With a send effect, you are sending a copy of the track to another channel where the effect is then placed. This is often referred to as parallel processing. Just like in the channel editor, we can remove, disable or reorder the effects. We can press this to disable all the plugins on the channel. To export your song to an audio file, simply draw a loop around the time range you want to export and go to Song, then Export Mixdown. Now choose the file name, save location, file format, and set your export range to between loop. Using keyboard shortcuts in Studio One can seriously speed up your workflow, and there's a ton of useful ones to learn. Here's some keyboard shortcuts for some of the things covered in this video. Remember you can customize these to your liking, so the ones I'm gonna show you, they're for the default settings of Studio One. Press play to start, and again to stop. Press circle on the numpad to stop, and then again to return to where you started playback, and then a third press will take you to the start of the song. Press the star key to start recording. W and E will zoom in and out horizontally. Hold shift to zoom in and out vertically with W and E. N will toggle grid snapping. Press forward slash to enable or disable the loop. Press D to duplicate an event. And finally, Control R will reverse an audio clip. So this was the first in the series. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know in the comments. If you want more Studio One tutorials, then I'll be adding them to this playlist. And if you want to see me actually making music in Studio One, then check out this playlist. Subscribe, introduce yourself, Share knowledge, Studio One Gang, sound.